had, we had one friend die a year for like 10 years, Ooh. qualified people, because that was a dangerous profession and we did it every day. Fly in space once every six or seven years, so at least the frequency of risk is lower. But when we look back now to what the risk was on my first shuttle launch, the risk of death during ascent was about one in 38. We thought it was a lot better than that. But now learning everything we knew, it was an extremely risky thing to do. But you just, you go, okay, this is gonna be risky, but it's worth it. Now my job is to not die doing this. How can we spend the next three years learning so much about this that no matter what happens, we have a plan and we're gonna react so that we improve our odds of surviving. So Mike, yeah. what's the most dangerous thing you encountered? Um, Launching into space was pretty scary. Would I, debris I, fly past you or uh, did you? you? I never saw any debris come at us, but there was evidence of it. Like for example, on the Hubble, you can see this down at the Air and Space Museum, we pulled out the wide field camera. And the wide field camera has an exposed radiator on it. And when I first saw it, and when it went back on Earth, it was peppered with little holes. You know, so these are micrometeroids. Micrometeroids, it wasn't, yeah, they, they, they cratered it. They didn't so while you're hole. spacewalking, you could get hit by something. You're on the, Why on wouldn't the, you always be hit by something? Uh, because the, it, it, it doesn't, it's not constantly coming at the same place. Okay. It's not like a, a rainstorm constantly. Right. But every once in a while, something will come. Did this scare you? Uh, no. Y yes. Actually, what do you mean, no? no? I mean, we, we, you, you were, Invisible the thing is, bullets in not space. at the time. So yeah. we talked about it a lot, about what might happen. We took, you take precautions. You practice rescuing each other. Uh, you go through your training and understand what that risk is. But when you're out there, you don't want to be worried about getting hit by a rock. You, no. know, you worry about doing your job, and okay, then if so something you happens, you react you, to it. You knew it intellectually, but Absolutely. you didn't feel it emotionally. No. Because you right. had to get the job done. No, all right. Chris Hatfield was in the space station for five months, and he recorded a video mm -hmm. that went viral. And it's the first music video from space. Let's check it out. Tom, you've really made the grade, and the papers want to know whose shirts you wear, but it's time to guide the capsule if you dare. So that was a, a sample from his whole video, yeah. uh, where it's, it's a Space Oddity yeah. by David, David Bowie. Right. And if you listen to the words of that, I mean, it's quite compelling. And it's and I remembered hearing that, and I said, this is an artist singing about a future we don't have yet, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I, I, that was sort of a force operating on culture mm -hmm. that I hoped would have continued and that we'd all be on Mars today. Yeah. What I wanted to know from mm -hmm. him is, how the hell did he get a freaking guitar in space? Yeah, did that cost like $8 million? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. It's a really good guitar though. <laughs> Let's find out. How did this man get this guitar in space? The NASA psychiatrists and psychologists put the guitar on board because uh, there's always been guitars on space stations. The Russians had one on Salyut and then they had it on Mir. I brought a guitar to Mir in 1995. But so you've been I, guitaring in space for decades. Well, I've been a musician my whole life. But when I got to the International Space Station, they had already put a guitar up there. They brought it up on the shuttle in the summer of 01. And so it's been up there for 13 or 14 years. And um, it, it's just a little guitar, had to fit, you know, it's a parlor sized guitar, but it's a good one. And it gets played pretty much every night. By, really? By, there's lots of astronauts who are musicians. Really? And it's really nice to have. I gotta hand it to you, that's, you know, you picked the right song for that. As soon as people heard there was a musician in the space station, there was this social media clamoring for, well, you gotta cover Space Oddity. And uh, I was thinking, I mean, who covers Bowie? Why would I ever do that? Besides, the astronaut dies at the end of the song. It's yeah, not a good yeah, song to play. Right. But my son said, uh, you got to. Everyone really, you know, do it for everybody else, not for you. And I got him to rewrite the words so that you know, the astronaut lived at the end.